Hi, my name is Elaine, and this story is called Bonnie and Snow, Part 4. I'm here today to help you to sleep better, deeper, and longer. This bedtime story has been written to make sleep a little bit easier for you, and all you have to do is listen. Sleep is so important when you are little, when your body and mind are growing. And good sleep will make sure you grow up to be healthy and strong. So I want you to get as comfortable as you can, whether you're lying in bed or somewhere else. You can maybe pull the covers up, move your body until you're really, really comfortable. But before we start, I want to do a little bit of breathing with you. Breathing helps to calm the mind and to relax the body. So I want you to do what I do. So are you ready? Take a nice deep breath in like this. And breathe out like this. Let's do that again. Breathe in and breathe out. One last time. Breathe in, breathe out. Now some people can fall asleep really easily and others find it takes a bit longer. And if you decide to go to sleep before the story ends, that's perfectly fine. Remember, you can always listen again tomorrow night. So let me ask you now. Are you ready for the story? A long time ago, there was a black and white puppy dog called Bonnie who really wanted to fall asleep. But no matter what she did, she just couldn't sleep. Now, you might have heard this story before. It was one of the first ones I wrote. But I want to tell you that Bonnie has now grown up and she has puppies of her own. And the puppies are around your age and dog years. The puppies enjoy doing all the things that you like doing. They love to play and have fun. They love running around and jumping. In fact, they would rather play all night than sleep. Bonnie was just the same, all the things that puppies love to do, she loved to do too. Bonnie had five girl puppies and four boy puppies. When it was bedtime, Bonnie would tuck them all into bed at night. And most of the puppies would fall asleep easily, everyone, except for Snow. Snow just lay there listening to the breathing of his brothers and sisters, watching the rise and the fall of their chests as they slept deeply. Snow just lay there thinking about all the things he could be doing rather than going to sleep. Too many fun things to do rather than sleep. Snow thought. He thought about running around outside, playing with the ball, on the swing, jumping around until he was so tired, in fact so tired that you would think that all his mind and body wanted was to go to sleep. But Snow just lay there looking up at the ceiling. Eventually, Snow would fall asleep, but it was always so hard, 
all the sounds around Snow that kept him awake soon started to make him feel sleepy. And I wonder if you can hear those sounds now and notice that your eyes feel a little heavy. And if they do, you might just want to close them if you haven't already done so. It was getting very late and Snow was feeling that he was about to fall asleep. Maybe now. Maybe in a few moments. Maybe later. He just lay there, listening to the sound of his own breath. It was soothing, he thought, and eventually he did fall asleep. The problem was the next morning when all the other puppies wanted to play, Snow was tired and grumpy. Snow always wanted to sleep in, but with all that noise, this was a little bit difficult. Of all the puppies, Snow thought he was the cutest, he was the smartest, and the most playful. Well, that's what he thought anyway. But really, all the puppies were cute and smart and playful. The only real difference that was Snow was pure white, and the other puppies were black and white or brown. And that's where his name came from, Snow. All he did in the morning was lie there thinking about falling asleep. And he started thinking about all the things that could make him tired, like playing, running, jumping, even eating. No matter what Snow did or how much he thought about those things, nothing really helped. Yet he was tired. But even lying down, his eyes remained open. Bonnie knew that Snow had a problem. She watched him. And it reminded him of her. Snow was lying on a beanbag on the floor and Bonnie went up and lay down beside him. Hi Snow, I've noticed that you're having trouble sleeping, she said. Yes. I don't know why, but my mind is thinking of so many other things. I find it so hard. I do want to sleep, but I just can't. I have so much going on in my head. Bonnie got up and went to the cupboard and brought out a large pillowcase and gave it to Snow. When I was little, she said, my mum gave me this exact same pillowcase and told me to put all the things that worried me, made me upset, things I was scared of, even sadness, into this pillowcase. And I want you to do that for me now, Snow, said Bonnie. I will leave the pillowcase here and you can put anything you want to get rid of in here. You don't have to tell me what these things are, Snow. Anything at all can go into that pillowcase. My mum would put the pillowcase into a cupboard and I can do that for you or we can tie the pillowcase up and get rid of it for good if you want. When I got a bit older, that's what I did with the pillowcase. When I put all my fears, anxieties, thoughts and upsets into the pillow, I decided I didn't want them back, she said. You can choose tomorrow whether you want them back or not. Snow spent the next 10 minutes doing what Bonnie had suggested. And one by one, he put his thoughts 
things that were upsetting him, things that made him sad, things that made him scared, all into the pillowcase. He then gave the pillowcase to Bonnie, who tied it up and put it in the cupboard for the time being. Do you feel that your mind is a little bit clearer? Asked Bonnie. Do you feel a bit better? Snow said, yeah, I actually do. I do feel better. That night, after dinner, when all the puppies went to bed, Snow lay down and felt himself getting a bit sleepy. Mum, he cried, I'm feeling sleepy. That's great, Bonnie replied. Night, night, Snow. And Snow did sleep a little bit, but he would wake up and then he'd go back to sleep and then he'd wake up. He was worried that there might be something in his head that he hadn't put into the pillowcase and he worried about that. The next morning, Snow had been playing outside with his ball when the strange looking lady an older lady arrived at the gate. I- I'm looking for someone called Bonnie, she said. That's my mum, said Snow. Can you get her for me, said the old lady. Snow went inside and wakened Bonnie. It was very early, you see. Bonnie immediately recognised the deep sleep fairy, who was now very old. Oh, it's so nice to see you, deep sleep fairy. And they gave each other a cuddle. Snow was watching. He had heard his Uncle Charlie talk about the deep sleep fairy, but he didn't know much about her. Bonnie and the Deep Sleep Fairy went for a long walk and they talked and talked. And when they came back, Bonnie had a large bag of small bottles by her side and said goodbye to the Deep Sleep Fairy. Snow really wanted to know what had happened and what the bottles were all about. Bonnie needed to feed the puppies and get them ready for the day. The time was not right, so Snow decided to wait. Eventually, all the puppies were out playing and Snow walked up to Bonnie and snuggled up to her. I know who that was today, he said. Bonnie smiled and said, yes, that was the deep sleep fairy. She helped me so much when I was about your age So now, I'm helping her. You see, there are so many animals in this forest that are having trouble sleeping, so it's not just you, Snow, said Bonnie. She is old and the trip to her house is long and difficult, so the animals are not going there anymore. Also, the night-night rabbit has moved away And the wise old owl is teaching at a local school, so no one comes to visit her anymore. So she decided to make a large supply of the sleep fairy dust and has asked if I could help deliver them to the animals who need it. She also gave me a book of ideas for sleep, which was written by both the night-night rabbit and the wise old owl. In the book, it explains what they did to fall asleep. Snow was very excited about the book. Can you read the first chapter to me, he said, excitedly. The first chapter was tips from the night-night rabbit, and Bonnie started reading. I jump here, I jump there, I jump everywhere, and then when I get tired of jumping, 
I slow right down. So I walk slowly, I move slowly, I eat slowly, I bend slowly, I think slowly. And when I'm doing everything so slowly, I fall asleep. Everything slowly. And then I lay down on the ground, my eyes shut, and I take a nice deep breath in, and I easily fall asleep. So for the next few days, snow started jumping everywhere and then doing everything slowly. So every night he put all his worries in the pillowcase and then after a day of jumping, he really started to slow down and found he was sleeping so much better. Still waking at night and waking early, but his sleep was definitely better. Later that day, Snow was sitting with Bonnie as she started reading the second chapter from the Ideas for Sleep book. Let me tell you what the wise old owl does to go to sleep. And Bonnie read the next chapter from the book. I think about all the different parts of my body and imagine them relaxing one by one. So lie down on the leaves or on your bed or somewhere flat and start with your toes. And move them a little and just let them relax. And move to your feet and let them go floppy and soft. And move to your legs and imagine them feeling heavy and then relax. Now move to your hips and tummy and let them sink a little more into the bed or wherever you are. Now up to your back, maybe stretch a little and then just let go. Move your hands and arms and let them flop down on the bed. Move your neck and head a little and then let your head sink into the pillow. So relax, so comfortable. Feeling so good, so sleepy, so drowsy, so deep. I feel your eyes getting heavier, your lips and cheeks relaxing. Maybe take a sigh and a big breath in and you just allow your whole body to relax. Feel your body just getting heavy. So good. So easy to sleep now. Now Snow was so sleepy just listening to Bonnie that all he wanted to do now was to fall asleep. And he noticed how tired he was. With all that slow moving and all that body relaxing. That's so good, said Snow. I bet you I sleep longer tonight. And so he did. What Snow didn't know was that during the night, when he was sleeping, Bonnie came into the room with a little bottle of the sleep fairy dust she got from the deep sleep fairy. She took the lid off and sprinkled some on Snow, some on the puppies, and some on you. From that day on, Snow slept all through the night, every night, but he always filled the pillowcase with anything that was causing him to feel sad, angry, upset, worried or scared before he lay down. 
when his head hit the pillow, his eyes closed, and he fell asleep straight away. So easy for him now. Every now and again he would do some jumping, slow everything down and make all the parts of his body relax, thinking about them one by one. And this helped on days when he was not so busy or active, but sleep became easy for him. Every day Bonnie went to visit one or two of the animals in the forest who had problems going to sleep and she gave them the ideas for sleep book and a little bottle of sleep fairy dust. The deep sleep fairy makes sure that Bonnie has enough fairy dust to help all the animals. On this particular day, Bonnie arrives home tired but happy that she's doing her best to help the forest animals sleep she knows how important it is to have good sleep, particularly if you want to grow strong and healthy. She crawls into bed and snuggles up close to her family. She reaches over and gives Snow a big hug and smiles as she watches him sleep so deeply. And as her head touches the pillow, she closes her eyes and feels herself sinking into a deep, easy and happy sleep. So deep. So sleepy. Night, night.